Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Skull and Bones. We're going to start by optimizing Windows, and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So, not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off, and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottlenecks. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to Control Panel, open it, go to Manage 3D Setting, and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS, uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring, uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue, but if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, so first of all, make sure that you're playing your native resolution on your monitor. So in my case, it's 1440p, so really important to do that. VSync, I'm not using it. I don't like to add input lag in my game, but you can use other technology like G-Sync and FreeSync if it's available to you. Field of view, I'm playing default at 100%. You really need to understand that if you increase your field of view, you're going to lose some FPS. So my recommendation is more like... Do the, my old guide, look at your FPS. If you're uh, satisfied with your uh, the amount of FPS that you have, you can definitely change your field of view. Uh, I don't put any FPS limit. If you have some issue with your thermals on your PC because you're playing on a laptop or a bad desktop PC, uh, lock your FPS with the amount of Hertz of your monitor. Now let's go to graphics. So first of all, adaptive quality, make sure this one is at off. Shadow, this one is pretty huge. If you compare very high at low, you can expect 15% boost in your FPS. I recommend to go with medium. The game looks very flat at low. So medium is a good balance between performance and a visual quality. And you're going to increase 12% of your FPS. After that, upscaling. So first of all, if you don't have DLSS or FSR, TA, I recommend to play native. If you're using quality balance or performance, you will see that the game looks very like blurry. It's a bit weird. But my recommendation is if you have a RTX card, definitely go quality at DLSS. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of balance performance or ultra performance. The game looks too blurry again. But if you don't add the R, uh, DLSS, use FSR. Same thing. Use quality. In DLSS at quality, I... Uh, Normally, I'm getting a 13% boost in my FPS, and with FSR, I'm getting 10% boost, and I compare FSR 2 and DLSS, and honestly, DLSS is a lot better than FSR in this game. Environment detail, this one touch your texture, so you just need to look at your uh, texture bar over there, make sure that you have like 10% empty, so definitely when you go higher, it will uh, improve your FPS. I saw some drop in my FPS when I was using that, so it's not just VRAM. So definitely do something between high and very high if you have a lot of VRAM. If not, just go with medium. It's a good balance for your FPS. Clutter, I recommend to go with low. You're going to gain a nice 6% boost in your FPS, and it's not that bad for your visual. Water, this one is pretty huge. At high, the reflection tank your FPS. So I recommend to go with medium. You see a lot of water in this game, and you want decent graphic. But for sure, if you're struggling with your FPS, definitely go with low with water. Screen speed reflection in this game takes a lot of resources, and as you can see on the water. Uh, so I recommend to just like deactivate it. I know it's pretty huge and it looks very flat without it, but you can expect a nice 5% boost in your FPS, and your FPS will also stabilize a lot without it. Volumetric cloud, I recommend medium. You're going to get a free 6% boost over there. And beyond occlusion, I recommend to using it. The games look very flat without it, and it's not that bad. You're going to lose 2 to 3% in your FPS. Depth of fill and motion blur, make sure that you deactivate those ones to have like the best visual quality without noise or like blurriness. 
that motion blur can add in even depth of field. And the last one is retracing. For sure, if you want pure performance, you need to deactivate your retracing. So it's gonna help a lot to have uh, to stabilize your FPS. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my skull and bones guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.